This is episode 15 of the Florida Sound Archive podcast. I'm Jeff Kaiser. My guest for March 2021 is the man himself, Confusion Records owner, John yes, I am a legend. Mm-hmm. Clemens, the legend himself. Welcome, John. Good to have you on oh, with God me. Oh, God bless you for all the accolades. <laughs> Well, you've earned them, right? I mean, you've been around for what? We're talking uh, four four decades now? Boy, I mean, tragically, I started a band like 30 years ago. And they were 15 years younger. And they're all passing away. Like half the band is dead under my feet. And I'm, you know, here. And they, they graduated. They were 25 when I was 39 in the band. You know, that kind of situation. Where I could look younger, I could, you know, pull it off for a while. But I thought I was pulling off. Nobody else did. But anyway, they they went on with the band. They kept it up, but they never really got much beyond Fort Pierce. You know, from Stewart to Fort Pierce. You know, but they believed the hype. They believed they could grab the ring. So that was part. But anyway, they all died. What do you do about that? I had to go get a talisman and consult a black witch, but we all eventually get around to that. I mean, everybody has to go down to the Santeria shop sometime. (laughs) What's been your success to staying, staying so well? Well, I listen and I'll even have presidential candidates like I had all the Kanye West when you were in here and you totally thought it was oh poltergeist Uh, anyway you totally thought it was a mess but you know I said I'll carry you know if I want to carry Trump Biden or Kanye West I'll keep any candidates in here I want and you should it's your shop (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, like we really talked about that. Right. What do we talk about? Nothing. <laughs> probably not much. No, probably just uh, you know. Well, you vogue a lot, you know, hang around in corners, so <laughs> that's right. So let's kind of start off when you were getting into <laughs> records themselves. How did you wind up getting into vinyl? I don't need how I became friends with you. I don't know either. That's a great question. Yeah, absolutely nothing in common remotely. I just kept coming record to the wise, shop. Record-wise, I mean, especially record-wise, we could live in the same house and never have to worry about each stealing each other's records. Well, everybody else, Kaiser, I could depend on. He has... He inhabits another world in Bay City. Could be like in the woods in Bay City, but it's somewhere out there. I mean, totally different terrain musically. I don't know, never known where you're at. I just knew we'd never have a conflict. That's right. You know what? There actually was one instance. I don't know if you remember this. But oh, were like, you not buying scissors, sisters? Forget no, it. Put no. it behind you. <laughs> this was I like I didn't mean to pull scissors out. <laughs> this was like my second or third time in the shop, and I remember. I don't remember that far back. I remember. I remember because you wouldn't. I don't know for well for one. I don't know why I wanted it, and number two, you wouldn't sell it to me. It was a <laughs> Samantha Fox single, and you had it up on the wall, and you wouldn't sell it to me. You said you were keeping it. <laughs> I can't believe that. I must have been drunk. I mean, I didn't, I mean, I collected the new ones for, I don't know, for a month or so, but gosh, yes, yeah, she's not bad. Mm. I don't know. I don't know why yeah, I was hoarding Samantha Fox, but I thought maybe I thought she was coming in the store soon. <laughs> she may, she may have, and I didn't recognize her. You know, that, that happens. Tori Amos came in before she's famous, or I, I didn't know. Uh, Dan Marino had no idea who that fucker was. <laughs> I yeah, said, uh, he went over and looking at Motown. I said, you know, you at the mm-hmm. FBI? He said, no, <laughs> my wife goes down to the courthouse. <laughs> <laughs> And but meanwhile, everybody along the whole track, the AA and everybody had given him body coke, slapped him on the shoulder, you know, 
totally kissed his ass. But I didn't know who he was, and Daddy appreciated. He wanted to get out of the line. Always getting an- anonymity in my store. Sometimes I don't know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I know that uh, Thurston Moore made his way into your store a couple times. What was he like? Nice, nice. I'd always to tell Cossie about the Kenneth Anger books. I said, Thurston are kind of a little bit gay. You know, I don't, you know, I don't even know. He, he just brushed it off and said, I have research to do. I said, okay. Well, he was writing a book on mayhem, for God's sakes. And he toured with the mayhem singer. And he seemed to be a regular dude. There's one person in mayhem with all the murders, the soup, beating, bones. You know about them? No. You don't to... know about Mayhem. Mayhem the band? Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I I do. Yeah, a little bit. There are no regions that eat people. Why don't you go to Wikipedia right now? <laughs> <laughs> there are no regions that take all the props of Slayer and take them somewhat seriously. Yeah. So that's so what he... I guess you don't listen to them either. Um, I had them, no. but is that what you listen to? No, I didn't. I didn't open. They were all new records. They mm-hmm. they said I can listen to. Uh, oh, there is some of them. Well, a couple of them good. These nerdy guys from Germany are kind of good. Yeah, some of them aren't really. Not, some of them are nice people in the. It's not Dead Throne. Is it Dead Throne? Death Throne. Death Throne? I, I, I'm a uh, Dark Throne. Dark Throne. Is yeah. that it? Uh, yeah. From Dana, D- Denmark, or something? I mean, I'm sure they're from somewhere over there. But see, I don't need Wikipedia for them. I ha- that that I know. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're, but they're half as popular in Florida as Mayhem. Hmm. I mean, maybe they're running neck and neck now, though. But anyway, he wrote a book about them, but that was a group that just did not care if they made it or not. And Went just, above me yeah. all the norms of anything outside of anyone's concept of forming a band, reasons why. Uh, but yeah, so he, he was investigating them, so he bought a Kenneth Anger book. That was all yeah. around about Thurston Moore, led all around through there. So he didn't buy any records or any music? Yeah, $75. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did he you bought cut his a... own record. <laughs> Did you cut him a deal? Yeah, David Bowie, <laughs> David Bowie, birthday party. He's on it with Foo Fighters. Okay. Sonic Youth, Foo Fighters, uh, Lou Reed. Uh, all these people. I don't think you have any, do you? <laughs> you know, I actually, uh, I do. Matthew Pumpkins, Cure. Yeah. They're all in that birthday party. Robert Smith of the Cure, Billy Corgan. In, in other words, the main members, all four of Sonic Youth, they play I'm Afraid of Americans. Mm-hmm. So it's a three record set. Thurston Moore didn't know it was in, it was even out. It, it being a little, it's a pyramid label. They are legit over in Europe. Pyramid. But over here, it's a little sketch here. But anyway, some people get them in the Ann Arbor. It's readily sold on eBay. Uh, Discogs, I never checked them out if you're on there. Discogs has such pruning. You know, you can't have no uh, dildo records. No. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they prohibit a lot. No, of no screaming Jay Hawkins without his clothes on. No Robert Smith and with his toothpicks out, you know, or anything like that. <laughs> but no bootlegs, in other words. Not even a hint of it. Right. What did so, you? Th- I mean, they're okay. They're, you, they used to be cheaper in prices a couple of years ago, and they're, now they're running neck and neck with eBay. 
I mean, okay. I buy off eBay. People always ask me, do you sell on eBay? That's, what are you, moron? <laughs> no, I buy off eBay, motherfucker. You know what? They're not interested in hearing anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those kids are old, old temple. Everybody sells on eBay. <laughs> Yeah, we must go uh, eBay store. Where'd it go? <laughs> <laughs> you know, if things crop up and then they pop up and die. Up. IPO, you know, like even um, Colin Kaepernick, he has a new IPO. I'm getting one. Are there any records that you bought off Discogs or eBay that you're pretty happy you picked up? Yeah, everything. <laughs> 10,000 10,000 records <laughs> I mean I really have I really I bought like Ansley Dunbar retaliation well, that is Jalia Bensky over there from Love and Spoonful is it, ooh, he, he doesn't care if he sings good or not <laughs> don't give a damn wish I had that attitude what would you say is your attitude these days it's good um pretty much just in, try to enjoy the people as much as possible uh they're a lot better since the pandemic i'll say that i mean i don't i don't put on the mask they all do you know that's the way it is. I don't really have any opinions about it. <laughs> I don't say any, they don't ask me. They says, I tell them I don't wear, I don't really care. I, you know, that's the only thing I guess I care about was DeSantis. Yeah. How would we don't you have any, yeah. We don't have any laws here. I mean, standard sure. down. I, I'm allowed, if I don't like the way you're, looking at me i'll shoot your ass <laughs> i mean i'm allowed to i don't have a pistol or a gun but sure florida you know i mean you, it's like living in deadwood you know phone just came in phone line just came in last week you know deadwood the tv show oh yeah where they kill wild bill hickok <laughs> that show wasn't on very long, maybe about. Oh, I love. I, I loved it. I got a playing card, though, in case you ever want to play. Okay. You know what's funny? I used to have a. I used to have playing cards from that show as well that I I I had. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Always imitating me, following me around. I know it's terrible. So, how did you get into records in the first place? Like, what made you decide to even start selling records? Oh, gosh. I mean, I was 35 years old and I tried, had 35 jobs. As you can tell, my kind of personality you would if I talk like this on the job. I mean, you can be on something like the King of Queens or show like that and talk like this, you know, people and people will be faintly amused. They don't like it at work. You sit there talking shit all the time. <laughs> and I was good at it. Sure. Just bullshitting your way through situations. I mean, I would have like jobs and construction and, and be operating big machines. I didn't even know what the hell I was, you know, operating on, and people would just give them to me, bulldozers and running around not knowing really anything. Just go out there and, and run everything, not having, you know cranes and uh, <laughs> i yeah i would draw the line some places but i wouldn't do any um free-for-alls or anything in a crane i wouldn't you know goof around with the crane jump on it like i would everything else the bulldozer i'd hop on tractors and ride on the front while the engine's running and but i was re very respectful but I was substitute teaching and any, anyway, I, I, I tried everything else. Uh, 
I pretty much had to jump in the store just as, and then I kind of wanted to, and I, I worked the flea market a couple of years, and I, I just letting go of that first batch of records. I mean, at first you think you're the guardian of the galaxy with your record collection. That is, you should be locked in an impregnable fortress, and that record collection. I mean, as a kid at twenty, you're fucking real anal, and everything is wrong. Everything you think is wrong. What year was and this? Is, hmm? What year was this around? When I collected records, I I had record collections at twelve, sixty uh, fours. And not, I mean, my grandparents ran a carpet golf. They played records. Like they bought Little Richard and they thought that was crazy. They were in their 60s, you know, and they were playing Little Richard, Tutti Fruity or Jenny Jenny. That's what they got. And um, they thought that was raucous. But my, my parents really were the only people in the whole family not prejudiced, you know, my grandparents. Everybody else that they were related with was real racist Alabama, but mine weren't. So I was lucky in that way. Really? But I started in Stewart in 87. I tried everything else. I'd worked at Bay Hill, uh, Arnold Palmer's place. I worked at Port St. Lucie, General Development, uh, various. Uh, jobs ahead of kitchens and got offered a lot of teaching off and on and going to different schools, trying different jobs. I'd barked under school. I went to electronic school. I went to like 20 schools in 20, I had 35 jobs. <laughs> I'm serious, Some, most jobs only last one or two months. Kind of like George Costanza, you know, <laughs> sleep on the desk, uh, bullshit with Steinbrenner. Steinbrenner. <laughs> were you just getting bored of what you were doing or what was going on with you at that time? No, I was just not really ever, I wasn't finding what I could, where I could fit in because obviously I, I really couldn't work with anybody else like a nuclear plant and places like that. They, they ain't gonna let me in there. <laughs> Not with that kind of record. After a while, you don't even have any references. Right. At 35 jobs, you're just leaving. And it looks like you're, you're not worth the shit. I mean, I could get jobs like driving fuel oil trucks. And I had a college degree, for God's sakes. What's your, de <laughs> what's your degree in? English. I mean, you yeah, already knew how to speak English before I even went in. <laughs> they didn't know that. <laughs> no, you have to read 800 page books. Right. Dickens, Pickwick Papers. I mean, I'd read every other one and I had to read the cliff notes. I, ain't, I cannot read 800 pages a week and then go to other classes. Physically impossible. I can't even read 80 pages a week. Sometimes, not now, <laughs> but 800 pages, that's daunting. I you imagine that. flipping all that pages? <laughs> Is that why you always had books in the store? <laughs> well, I had a store. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is that why what? Is that, what is that why? Because a lot of music shops don't always carry books and you always have oh. had, you've had books for as long as i can remember is that why you carry books as well because you like to you like to read yourself yeah i just got a book on keith ralph lee singer yardbirds but yeah i've always had yeah and i have most of them i try to you know time the music but you know they can get pretty far astray but yeah i try to make everything musically related but Obviously, all these DVDs in here, you know, they're not there. Luckily for me, Dead in the Water merchandise, I just watch them over and over. Like, I can watch something and then a year later only remember one-fifth. 
of anything. It'd be girl, girl with the dragon tattoo. You know, I can watch nine hours. And a few years later, oh, you know, barely remember any of the tattoos. And then there are different tattoos in the American, different tattoos. <laughs> And then there's different plots. And then you got Daniel Craig, you got James Bond and the American one. So it's all, all daunting, you know, to see everything and all the music videos and everything. Now it's almost just a deluge of information. Right. You, you, speaking of tattoos, did you ever get a tattoo yourself? No, 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 you, Bob. Yeah. Mm. Most of the girls I've ever known had a tattoo somewhere. It could be small as a small moon on their ankle, but they got one some hidden somewhere. <laughs> so maybe the maybe the first couple, but yeah, for something like especially since I've been in the store, every girl I've ever known has some tattoo. Right. Somewhere. Right. I'm sure over the years you've seen a lot of different people come in and out. Any, any anyone you've had in the store that's been shopping there for since the beginning? No, like I said, everybody in the band is pro, so a lot of their crowd, I don't should say more reverentially. You know, they were friends of mine, so I shouldn't really say so disparagingly, but uh. They they been out of touch, but yeah, they went on without me. So hell with them. <laughs> <laughs> talk talk about the music a little bit. So what was this like an early like garage kind of band? Like what were you? Yeah, doing? yeah, we do Yardbirds. I was sort of a singer. I just wish I had the confidence and you know that I have now, and I wish I had it even thirty years ago, or just and then things like tabs and cheeks that kids have now but of course now nobody's got anywhere to play so it's like they got everything and you can't go anywhere with it the kids all the musicians have all that voice tuner or you can double your vocals you can but you ain't got any place to take it that is so strange i mean the, the, that whole shit's been cut off you know for what it don't look like any foreseeable future and ever coming back, but I got tickets to John Mayall. He's 86 or 87. I'm going to see him in um, Stewart. They canceled three times, postponed it. So he's, you know, they're waiting. They can keep postponing until he's gone. You know, what are they going to do? I don't, I bet June it don't come around. What do you think? You think they're going to have a regular concert in June where he goes set? I, I they have comedy clubs, but I sure. haven't heard it musically. Yeah, I think maybe in some states. I don't know. I don't know. Florida might be. They they could do it. That age yeah. group, though, they're going to have major fatalities. Hopefully. Sure. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> and thinking about just that, you know, concerts in general, are there any concerts you've been to over the years that really just stand out to you as some of your favorites that you were able to attend? Mm. I like Devo uh, concert wise. Uh, what year did you see them? 78. Mm. That's all the records that same year. Nobody even remembers them at all. They kind of were moving along. And then Pretenders were good. Uh, McCartney. Believe it or not, the Ringo tours were real good because you got to see Jack Bruce from Cream and sometimes members of most of the band at one time. Uh, you get to see Lee Singer, Guess Who. And you get to see 15 or 20 different people over a period of a few years, so that was always good. Uh, Sighting-wise... Uh, I mean, the first ones where I saw were honestly right here in Palm Beach. Billy Joe Royal, you probably don't remember him, but uh, down in the boondocks. 
down in the boom docks. <laughs> uh, people put me down because that's the side of town I was born in. You never heard that. It sounds familiar. Yeah. I it, love her. She loves me. Where I don't get her society. <laughs> sing it. Where were you seeing these? You were seeing all these shows up in Palm Beach, you said? Yeah, Palm Beach Auditorium. What is now Leaky? They call it Leaky TP. Jehovah's Witnesses on it now. God, all they do is go in there and talk. <laughs> <laughs> Geez, why would they buy like a place like that? All enclosed and everything. Go in there and hear people. I've been to them, Jehovah's Witness thing a couple times. Man, that's the dullest thing you ever been to. I mean, in my whole life, in my whole life, that is like kind of a conception of what would be hell to me. You know, just walking around a Jehovah's Witness arena. And I've been in the arena of Jehovah's Witness. They got one in Lakeland, too, or somewhere up there. I've been wherever they have other ones. They have arenas everywhere. And Jehovah's Witnesses now are just some dysfunctional African-Americans. That I, can... I mean, I don't know if I have any Jehovah's Witness friends on Facebook or anything, but I'm sorry y'all are a little bit dysfunctional. <laughs> is there any do they have any music that that's get that that gets played or because you know if you go to church or something like that you may hear some music so do, are they known for music too or no damn no not enough not enough brother god bless you for bringing that up yeah i think that's what they're lacking i don't think they have any you know now that you mentioned that's what's wrong that's a church from hell <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I don't want to get in trouble. Maybe that's something you should Damn, suggest. They'll be after me. They're, thankfully, they're not too much into retribution and bombing people, but I guess it, I don't know. That was my impression. I love them to death. Don't get me wrong. Many friends. I take them home every night. You know, Cleveland. He wasn't a Jehovah's Witness, but his old family was. I know that. That's why I can kind of talk about it. I love them. I love them as people. But they are dysfunctional. <laughs> were, you, <laughs> were you at all? Were you at all going out of Palm Beach? Maybe seeing stuff in other parts of Florida, maybe like Miami or. Uh, yeah, I've been to all those. I'm in the Miami Pop Festival. I saw the Turtles, Ted Nugent. It was the year Hendrix didn't play. I think he played earlier. Mm. Uh, Austin, you know, I saw everything there. Uh, I seen, I seen Barcelona. I saw Iggy Pop and Barcelona, Spain. I saw Lori Anderson in uh, Venice, Italy. So you know Lori Anderson. She yeah. plays violin. Yeah, She's yeah. with Lou Reed's woman for a while, and avant-garde artist. Right. I don't know. You should know her. She's trippy. Yeah. <laughs> I I have, you don't heard have of any, her. Her records. What kind of records you got? No, I don't have it. You're right. I don't have. What, you don't seem to have any center. I don't have any what? <laughs> center. Center. You, you're like a. Yeah, the, the center cannot hold. The wheel is flying off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could no more tell you what you would want. You seem to have no nucleus or center. No. I can't. It's not okay. soul. Or it's not plastic soul. It's not northern soul. It's not, it's not really anything. It's like that big cloud on Star Trek. That's right. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> The companion. That's the way you are to me, the companion, you know, and I know you're not a female like that, but you know, you, uh, your taste, man, it's a cloud. Yeah. Sometimes a dark cloud. No. Yeah. Some, every, every once Jeff Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I'm dark, sometimes, Kaiser. yeah. Not my Jeff Kaiser. You never know. You never know. So uh, talk to me about 
local bands that you may remember from whether it be the 70s, 80s, 90s? What are some bands you remember maybe seeing back in those time periods that stand out to you? Well, Marilyn Manson came in the store, you know, uh, real early, I guess. He bought a, uh, went in the Publix and bought a Coke. I didn't see him, though. I, I'm always trying to avoid him. I thought, man, because somebody told me, you know, I thought, you know, he would want to do the whatever he did on stage, the flacio thing. I thought he'd run up to me. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. But anyway, I, I just, I said, you know, the way girls would just adore him and talk, talk about his antics, you know. But uh, so I always tried to avoid him. But I ended up seeing him anyway when the Smashing Pumpkins opened for the Stones. And uh, he joined the band for three songs. But anyway, I always, Manson was in and out around there. You know, Tori Amos would go in all the stores too. Uh, had quite a few artists like, Big country artist, which you wouldn't know, but Gary Stewart came in, uh, NRBQ, all of them. Tiny Tim called up and uh, he wanted to come in, but he wanted 150, and damn, I didn't have it. I should have really went to try to scrape it together, but it was like I'd only been two two months in, you know. Yeah, I was just man. Those first couple months is like, man, you're in there three or four days. And I told over 400 kids at school before I left to come in 400. Wow. These big, huge classes of auto, auto mechanics, not auto mechanics, but auto, auto learning, auto safety, driver school, whatever it is. It was like auditoriums. And anyway, I got one kid come in. I said, man, that's the ratio. I'm in trouble. I think he bought one record. Just one. Meanwhile, I've been in the flea market selling a bunch of records. Yeah, I made $4 in three days. I Come on. <laughs> that don't look too hopeful. But man, I was sitting there and also I didn't think I had anything when I started because I came from the flea market. I said I had no stinking metal, heavy metal, but sold heavy at the flea market. Well, thankfully, you move into brick and mortar store. Those people don't go in brick and mortar stores. Most of them, bikers, <clears throat> a lot of the metal people, even this kind of a, a black kid who was real nice at the so no, I didn't have to worry about it, but this guy came in. I think he wrote me a check. Thankfully, it was good for like, you know, the first week and a half or something. I'd end up in there just drinking beer all the time. You know, what are you going to do? Pretty soon you got it. Your alcoholics is right next door to you and you're having to use the bastards. <laughs> <laughs> have to do all 12 steps maybe 12 times and then then to, to learn 12 steps backwards and then do a place line up <laughs> <laughs> what's been some of the craziest moments in the shop oh well dan marino episode um uh, I think, you know, maybe Tim McVeigh came in, you know, um, with these skinheads and they sort of cordoned off the store. And uh, a cute girl approached me from them and she's the only girl. <clears throat> <clears throat> she's the only girl in the bunch. She approached me. And she, I just said, I did, she wanted to put up some banners for the White Power Festival, whatever it was. And I just said, I can't put up anything political. She said, everything in here is political and, you know, smiled. Well, they always have a good spokesman. And, and even their spokesman, 
who wasn't Tim McVeigh, you know, had a lot of things in common, like his animal rights and everything I would agree with. They'd have 10 things I would agree with, and then they would have that. But they would go into a trance when they talked about the Fuhrer. I, I oddly go off into, you know, the Nordic type of mythology and look into far distant lands as they talk. They actually think of themselves in some ways as more Vikings than Aryans. At least over here in the States. You can tell the way QAnon dresses. He's more Viking than... He's definitely not more... He's not a Native American, you know. His, his sympathies are organic food preferences. Yeah. Well, he blinked for a long time there on the pitch. <laughs> Speaking of food, every, oh, is the next thing. <laughs> every time I've come into the shop, you usually have something that you've been eating. So uh, how's your, how, how's your diet been oh, in the shop? <laughs> The last time I was in the shop, I could have swore you, you think you, you may have gotten wings from somewhere nearby or something. You had a a plate of wings. Oh no. Yeah, I, I don't know. You're getting me mixed up. I'm pretty much <laughs> super cleanse. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was it was about two years ago since I was last there. So maybe you've started super cleanse in the last two years, or have you been taking that? Peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you have immune there? defense okay that's why i don't have to wear a mask yeah i see that now bountiful beach look at you you're like a you're like a whole food store <laughs> super greens hey you hit you hit a nerve motherfucker <laughs> i see that when did you start with apple cider vinegar too when did you start eating eating that way uh as soon as i try to get my motherfucking blood pressure down okay. that's so bitch has got to go <laughs> no it has no symptoms it's like covid it has no symptoms no warning no thing you, you just you just kill over, fall off a mountain, or you could fall in the ocean, or you could, you know, trip over the bathtub like Tony Soprano's uncle. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of ways to go. You know, what I do is walk across miles and miles of, of grass, bare feet, mm -hmm. get grounded. I'm a holy man now. I know. I still listen to records. I like the funk music and everything that you like. You know, I know you're a big little Gibson fan. You know, you often wear the little Gibson metal. But uh, we could spend a long hours, long hours around the campfire talking about Sylvester. You're right. And... Um, <laughs> When did that start? Because I can't remember. Sylvester, you know, he, he's somewhat a, he is a shaman to us, I think. Everything we, <laughs> everything we ever learned. <laughs> I remember, though, you, you're one of the few shops in town uh -oh. that I could, I could always pull out a good <laughs> Sylvester record from your bins. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh but it's just some people you know wonder how the fuck they made it in the business you know they got it they find a niche in society in in late night drippy places that we never never have been or imagined They'll do a song and dance in those places like Bette Midler in the gay bathhouse. That's how she got started. And she's not even any trans Q L B T T or anything. 
And see, that's how she got started. So you never know. But there's all kinds of sub niches, you know, like uh, Thurston Moore buying that Kenneth Thanger book. You imagine trying to watch that stuff? What kind of life you would have? Yeah. <laughs> it's miserable and beyond miserable. Um, people, how about, I don't want to get current 93 fans riled, but you know, do, do, do they get anything out of anything, anywhere, <laughs> anything, anyhow? You ever listen to that stuff, heard that stuff? Yeah, I have. I, I, uh, I, I never really got into the current 93 or, uh, like the nurse with wound, like that type stuff. I never really caught on with death in June. Death in June actually is a little bit more melodic, I think. Yeah, death in June. I mean, June, things yeah. like dead can dance. I can understand a lot of things. Sure. Just moral coil, dead can dance. All that God stuff sounds beautiful. But, you know, some of it, it just, you know, goes under there and just records sounds from hell. That's what a current 93 is. That's It ain't nothing else but whatever they conceptualize that it sounds like down there. Well, if, that, if it is down there. Not, commit, not committing myself. <laughs> but yeah, that is the sound. Authentic. Authentic. As close as you're ever going to get in this world. Probably. Unless somebody, you know, puts me in the cell movie, number one, puts me in the cell. <laughs> scary, kind of a scary movie. Yeah. Dennis Diofalo. You ever hear of it? It sounds I think Jennifer yeah. Lopez. Jennifer Lopez, believe it or not. Yeah. She can walk through that dreamscape, actually. She, she redeems her whole career with that movie. Right. You had mentioned about some different places and clubs and stuff that others had may have performed in. What do you remember from your maybe, you know, 20, 20, 30 years ago? Are there any clubs that were around back then that you would frequent more often than, than not? And you have some uh, memories? I went to Respectful Street. I saw Pop Weed itself right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, Pizzicato five you remember them mm -hmm. i do yeah japanese song and dance <clears throat> uh, i went to italian american club to see dead kennedys in orlando mm -hmm. i've been to roseland to see bowie that's sort of a club uh ooh. houston a lot of clubs i saw sir douglas quintet in a small houston club uh, lately, I've been down to Funky Biscuit. <laughs> I've been more concerts lately than I ever had in my rest of my life. Is there a reason for I that? I guess, you know, I went a lot from 76, mm -hmm. 76 to 80, a lot there. Okay. And then, and then from 2016 to 2019. Recent. Was there anyone more recent anywhere? Else? Yeah. How did you think about just the way downtown Palm Beach has evolved over the last, I don't know, 15? I think it's years. a glorious city. Mm -hmm. I don't think they could have done any better. I mean, it's a perfect city. I can't, can't find any flaws. I've been to Tamarin Avenue. I've seen the worst of the worst. I spent in the dark zones. You know, I, I used to have a heroin addict for a girl, you know. For, so I, Tamron, I've been to all those places. Nobody really ever bothered me. The dealers were always very polite. And um, that subculture, eh, looks like if you, they'll try to steal from me, you know, occasionally. All, all of them, all of them will, but they don't mean any harm. They, there's nothing personal with it. Uh, 
just like that, you know, scorpions don't bite you. Well, they're gonna, they they steal from you, but they don't mean they, and they will steal it all, but still they don't mean any harm. <laughs> <laughs> they take your horse, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, I can't. You can't fault them because you know, you know, when you when you take them in your life, that they they are dangerous. You know. Yeah. How did you Dang. start? How did you? How did you start getting into punk? Because you, you you mentioned a few punk bands over the conversation. Oh, punk! So yeah. How did you? How did you start getting into that? Like, at what point was that? Oh, something? that was definitely the most interesting thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, it's either that or I, you know, learn trills like yes forever. I go to, you know, you can't turn the clock back and go to. Uh, Juilliard School of Music over and over and over till you get it right. You're on a time constraint and the conveyor belt's moving along. But yeah, punk was just something, it just seemed right at the time and the, everything about it was refreshing. I don't know why. Uh, elements of goth, I guess, later. It, it's, uh, punk is pre-goth, sort of. And it's a little bit of the rockabilly kind of white trash thing. And English, lower English working class. Uh, attitude more than anything else, probably uh, throwing off the yoke of past, not really past musical forms, but any definitely uh taking it some places where it hadn't been before i guess with the and it's not really anger as much as angst and just maybe frustration in the music but coming out pretty uh creatively back when you were discovering punk did you find that you were were you kind of angry at that time or no 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 but disappointed Definitely disappointed. And that kept me from being as disappointed. I was definitely disappointed in my situation. You know, working construction jobs as a, sometimes a helper and not really ever learning anything. And I drive a lot of trucks, conveyors and everything. Like I said, I could drive everything, but other learning real skills, no, other than driving and just, uh, looking bleak i mean you're not going to attract any kind of people in those kind of jobs who unfortunately you're just not going to meet people like you meet in movies you know like i have seen you know good looking girl roofers lately but back then you know i didn't really ever see any any chance of it. you were just always you know a rancid, dirty individual to most people in society. You work at Brown and Root and, and work in the oil industry, you, you're just dirty all the time. There ain't nothing you can do about it. You, the lava soap and all the gas station soap in the world, you know, man, it is soot. Beyond, beyond, beyond belief, welding and all that stuff is, Five easy pieces. That's why Jack Nicholson did it. <laughs> the movie Five Easy Pieces. He's yeah. an oil. He it was kind of like that. He's an oil rig worker. He's a piano player. He's a gigolo of some sort. You know, I try all those. <laughs> Speaking of movies, what are some of your favorites that you like to kind of go back to? Oh, the thing, probably the thing. The original or the John Carpenter? All one? the thing. All of them, okay. New one, too, all of yeah. them. That's right, they did remake that, right? Yeah. Yeah, they did. Yeah. It's good, too. They did a wonderful job. Yeah. And that's something... Even, he... James Arness is a little bit slow. You know, I like the actors. Uh, Kenneth yeah. Toby's in it, too. Uh, Kent Smith, I think, you know, but gosh... And it's a John Howard Hawks film. Right. But yeah, that that's nothing but a, a tall man at the end of the hall. 
far as monster. <laughs> How old were you? Awful tall. How old were you when you saw the original? Oh, I didn't see it until recently. Oh, gotcha. I mean, I've seen it probably not until, you know, as well to pass it all. I've seen it, you know, on TV. I don't even think I, I don't think I own that. But I own a lot of it. Date Earth stood still, still good. People talk about Doctor Strange Love. Uh, Citizen Kane. Uh, movie nobody else probably knows. Something like Barton Fink. You know, I like all that Cohen Brothers stuff. And Miller's Cross. Even. I like shows, even Firefly. Hate to admit it, I you know I could watch Down Downton Abbey and totally become emotional. Really, I don't know how that happened, but <laughs> yeah, it, I thought it was the antithesis of everything I, I was. Yeah, but you can. It's like when you meet meet people, you know, they can change you. Downton yeah. Abbey changed me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna move upstairs. I ain't working downstairs anymore. Just a metaphor of life for all you punks out there. <laughs> what? So what are you collecting these days? This is as good as any other podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Just personally, you know, what are some things that, I mean, have you, have you parted with things that maybe you collected over time or have you just kind of held on to everything? Parted with things? Yeah. Oh, I follow you. Yeah. No, I've let go of everything at least once. And sometimes got them back again. Not as, not quite as good as when I first had them. But, uh, you know, you got to make, make do. But yeah, I've had to let go of everything. Reds, guitars, uh, uh, Les Paul guitars, you know, all, uh, probably 15 different guitars. You know, and thousands of box sets of this and that I like. And, you know, you can't really be the Library of Congress and, and even be able to move. Your Library of Congress, you're, you're stationary. And right now, unfortunately, I'm kind of Library of Congress in here. But if I had to move, I mean, I could have a, a like a, what you call a gorilla rat force. You know, I could move into shop in 24 hours just take that you know big row over there and then mainstream classic rock and then you this and that oh i could get by but yeah i wouldn't have the arsenal but there's a strip i'm just saying there's a strip force you know yeah stripped down lean mean fight machine to move out in 24 hours but yeah i would have to leave for months, I'd have to leave the DVDs behind. They are, you know, no dead in the water, no and boy. Do you still have what a they lot? call, you know? Yeah, I just have a watch, watching myself, but they are a pain in the ass. Uh, some of the old DVDs really didn't like, don't last. The ones built for Sopranos around 2000 get kind of cloudy. Or, mm. Yeah, you have to have two or three sets of Sopranos to get through one season. You have to have three, three sets, three, three sets of season one. Because <clears throat> some of them aren't going to work. They're the stop in the middle. But other than that, most of them, most of them work for a long time. I mean, some of them scratched up and work, but the clouding seems to be the big enemy of that when they cloud up. Old CDs used to do it too. Yeah, they it's were not, supposed to be impregnable, and the first ones off the off the assembly line for some reason. After a year, they would all cloud up. You say, "What the hell happened?" <laughs> it, they didn't have the right mixture of magnesium and magnate. Poor blend, you know. It was a bad batch. A lot of people died over there in the northeast side with those CDs. Bad are, batch. What are <laughs> what are people coming into the shop for most often? Are they do they buy out of different things or is it mostly? Hopefully, they come in for the top ten. You know, mm -hmm. there's ten things people want. They're buying and people. 
Led Zeppelin, Beatles, and sometimes Jimmy or Dylan are interchangeable. Uh, Americana bullshit, you know. It, it, they may not know anything about blues, but they, they'll buy the, you know, the $40 BB King. Yeah. He, for one thing, he had a restaurant here, so. Had a little club. I could sell that shirt over and over. I get more of those BB King shirts. I can sell them in here. Everything. It's first TV show I've been on. That's what happens. Yeah, that's what happens. You, you, you know, over over time. You got you know. a big TV show now. Thousands of people. I hope so. You're gonna have after I'm. Yeah, on. I was gonna say after this episode. I mean, you know, th- this 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 is one that's gonna be. Uh, for people to find years later and well you can't warm up for this this kind of thing no that's why i didn't ask you to be my first (laughs) oh no i mean i can't warm up i can't think all night and say man i'm gonna say this sure oh i want to get that in there the only thing i had prepared is that first time you came in you said sylvester was more refined divine i thought that was so clever no, he didn't say that. I don't, I'm rem- I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking here. I don't remember. No, you would talk like that. I say, man. You know what, though? I have to serious s- carrying that LBGT. <laughs> I have to say, though, that <laughs> I refined the bond. Most, of the, re- most of the records I bought from your shop, I have had. I, I, I think, yeah, I don't think I, I don't think I've ever sold any of them actually, or traded them. I think all the ones I bought from your shop, I still, I still have. So I found some real good ones. Well, whatever it was, you got it for five. I guess kind of your limit. Is five <laughs> bucks. So especially actually, since I, you had the little boy, you know, you went from, I think you went from eight to around five. You cut three off. Like I did my hours here. Yeah. Although I went I, from 12 to eight to 12 to five yeah. and I make more money. Yeah. You believe it by cutting those last three hours off? How's that possible? I don't know. I do remember though. And I, this is one of the records I still have. There was uh the only Freddie Mercury solo album. You, you had that. Yeah, I had all those. I had a whole Queen collection of yeah. interviews. The, I had every, I had every uh, Roger album, uh, Dean, whatever his name is, and Brian May, every May, Roger Taylor album, every one of them. All the solos, anything, a complete Queen collection. It was pre-Queen. It, Queen wasn't even popular yet. I was sitting on Dutch. I had it in two, 10 years early. It's called 10 years early, Queen. Yeah. And then they became huge after the movie. I should have saved that stuff. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> you should have put it in the storeroom. This was years ago when I, when I, got, when I was going to get that Freddie Mercury record. And you had it for, it was, it was more than I wanted to spend. And I remember. Well, also, it was just. Oh, okay. You got me. That was a primo queen thing. No, I got that yeah. was huge. Yeah. They had, yeah. you know, the four CDs of interviews, mm. among other things. That was the last thing that was left, you believe it? And I sold it. And then they called back next day. I swear they wanted to bring it back. Why? She just th- thought she spent too much money and she wanted to bring everything back. It wasn't really even aimed against that. She just wanted to know she could get her money back. What's your policy I on said, returns? No, I, already gave it. <laughs> I just said, I just said, no, man, I'm so sorry. Can't, Cause I was real, she was a real sweet girl and I was real nice to her too. I had a great report and it was a good experience and a wrap up. And I, I don't know. I think she just, wanted to go shopping as a catharsis and uh, must have thought she came up short and one and you know i i was short too i think i'd already given my money away to landlord but anyway yeah she bought it i remember she bought that queen yeah interview well yeah that was all from that same batch 
They had little singles, thousands of singles mm. on CD. Okay. And seven inch. Yeah. Freddie Mercury, white vinyl, outtakes. Yeah. I couldn't wait to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I was, because I was known as the queen guy, you know, I, I couldn't have that for too long. I had to shovel it out the door. I had so much queen in here. Yeah. I remember because the price you were wanting to charge me, I, I didn't want to pay it. So, I think I came back of like maybe six months later and it was still there. And then I think you knocked off like 10 bucks. <laughs> I yeah. Have... I changed my attitude because they were dead in the water. Yeah. I don't remember. You what know, everything was. is dead. Almost everything was dead in the water back then. Yeah. Now nothing is that fish are flying, fish are jumping and the FIBA is high. <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna ask to kind of kind of round things out here you know when 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 you're alone in the shop you know what are some what's a song that you like to kind of sing in your head oh i sing um i just play it I, i'll play it i wasn't playing to but can you tilt the camera? Can you tilt the camera down a little bit? Huh? Is the camera on top of your computer screen? Does it? Does the camera move at all? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like that? We can see the guitar a little bit more. Yep. Just looking for a place where I can lay my head. Hey, mister, can you tell me where am I find the best? He just grinned and shook his head. That was all he said. Take a load off, Fanny. Take a load for free. Take a load off Fanny and put the load right on. Go down, Miss Moses went looking for a place to hide. When I saw her coming in the devil. Is that one that you wrote? Oh. No, that's a band. Okay. How was it? I didn't practice it. Yeah, that was. I a, didn't tune the guitar either. That was a surprise. Oh, it's like a bonus, you know. I mean, how many people have ever seen you perform that song before? Just some people down in Lake Worth. Hmm. Probably ten people. I meant to take it a little further out, but then everything closed. And then the band kind of coalesced around a more bluegrass thing than I had. I could have went more in their direction, but that's easy. I like the low-hanging fruit to me. 
I love it, but you know, it's it's if you're on guitar and you're playing bluegrass, you're mostly playing C and G. Come on. <laughs> Banjo's doing all the work. I mean you're you're slumming in a bluegrass band on guitar. Yeah. Play those two two chord rhythm, but okay, all right. Go be be Pete Best somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever put out anything music wise on on Yeah, I got CDs, cassettes. Yeah. Oh, it's right. I have one right here. Uh do I? Yeah, everybody knows. Can you see it? Yeah. You never seen it? No. Yes, yeah, me. I'm on the back. See me? Right there, white shirt. Oh yeah. What was that, early 90s? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think I've seen that picture before, but I never heard the the CD. What kind of music? Punk rock. Okay. So you were just doing guitar? No, I sang, right? Renaissance, man. Did you do any, uh, was it all originals, or did you do covers, or? Oh, yeah, all originals. Yeah, I write originals pretty good now, too, but, mm. I mean, people are real, will be real excited, enthusiastic and everything, and then whatever happens, they just disappear. Everybody who's going to, you know, come back and do this, come back and do that, or, mm. They make mighty, mighty uh, windfalls. How long does this thing go on? Uh oh. We're actually about to wrap things up. So in just in closing. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at that. I said 2.56, we start one. It's been three hours. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Was there... You know, any other final, any other final words you want to share? Oh, it's the best podcast I ever heard. Is that is? Are you just saying that, or is that because of? Uh, no, it's pretty good. It's yeah. a lot better than what I thought. Yeah, you're pretty good. I mean, you're professional. You got the mic and everything, like all the ones I know, <laughs> Tim Dillon, Jimmy Dore. Well, you know, I mean, I watch a lot, and they all got those professional mics. That's an essential. You got a nice one too. I mean, it looks like you're taking yourself. I mean, it's a serious shit. That's why I said when I looked at, I said, "Son of a bitch, is serious." And I'm glad that he's good. Glad because it, it it was yeah. It, I mean, you remind me also just saying tasty trades. Dylan Radigan and Tom Shoresnoff. Two traders on New York Stock Exchange, they they got that kind of look. The mics and um, it was and that's some of my favorite podcasts. Yeah, I mean, he, but like Max Kaiser, the other Kaiser I watch, he's financial also, mm. Bitcoin type thing. Okay, Max Kaiser. He's with his wife, and he's got more of a hanging mind, like right. a drummer. Right, yeah. You've seen those? I have. Yeah. And his wife, they both, they'll swivel them back and throw them. <laughs> you know, swivel them around. <laughs> but, yeah, they they got the different kind of mics. But I like all the mics. But the mic is a big, essential element. Sure. Absolutely. And, you know, it, it was important, though, you know, for me to to have you on. You know, because you've been right, around, you've been around a long time, and I always loved coming into your shop. And I wish I could stop by more, but when anytime I come down there, it's definitely on my on my list. <laughs> oh, I see you now. <laughs> anytime you know if I'm down there, y'all, I'll, I'll be there. It's a matter of when. <laughs> but uh, oh no, thanks for coming. Yep, it's great to. Great I will to catch you. you. Yeah, absolutely, and uh. I look forward to uh, many more to come and uh, 
John, thanks again for coming on the podcast. It was great to have you. Oh, on. thanks, Jeff. And thanks for breaking me in. Hey. My pleasure. <laughs> now I got lost a whole career. As soon as I get rid of my butterflies. Give the 